Hello, my fellow Alabamians. I'm Dr. Representative Republican Dr. Robert Bentley, MD. In November, how to be willing, I will become Dr. Republican Governor Dr. Robert Bentley, MD, Christian executive of this beautiful state. That is, as long as that sock-sniffing, livestock-loving demon crap from Fort Payne doesn't register cattle to vote for him. I'm here in this lily-white suburb today, by the grace of God Almighty, and his son Mike Huckabee, to speak with you regarding the communist plot we call mass transit. Oh, but first, you may have noticed that my appearance is somewhat different than usual. Specifically, I appear to be a hardened street criminal. Do not be afraid. As you heard, when I introduced myself, I work as a doctor. In fact, I'm so a doctor that I changed my first name to doctor. So now my name is Dr. Dr. Robert Bentley. I work in the field of Christian dermatology, and my skills are advanced to the point that I can easily disguise myself as the kind of dangerous thug that rides buses and trains. This will allow me to better explain why transit does not and will not work in Birmingham. Two weeks ago, I said to the Birmingham Rotary Club, Birmingham is not a mass transit city. It's just not. If you take light rail to get downtown, what do you do then? That's what I asked them Rotary folks. What do you do then? They seemed so dumbfounded by my question. They did not know the answer. I do not blame them. It is a complex answer, and I'll explain it with an example. I have an office here in this fruity orange building behind me, at the end of the street, in Hoover, Alabama. I have a meeting in Birmingham at the Jefferson County Courthouse with the County Commission President, Betty Fine Collins, to discuss tax incentives for a ladies' pantsuit company. Collins hopes the company will locate here because she likes their pantsuit designs, which are inspired by cutting-edge Mennonite fashions. Normally, I would put on my driving gloves and drive the 45-minute drive down to the courthouse. There, a dermatitis-free security guard would pick me up into his well-scrubbed arms and carry me from the loading zone to a pre-sanitized elevator and then into the commissioner's office. This is how the vast vast majority of Americans travel. Today, I have chosen to use mass transit, so I have driven my green car from my office to the bench here where the bus stops. In my back pocket, I have a travel pack of sanitary wipes. This is to protect me from all the dermatitis infecting this filthy bus. I also have a small bottle of moisturizing lotion. You should always moisturize after using sanitary wipes. Always. Doctor's orders. Do not carry any money or credit cards, they will be stolen. If you anticipate needing money at your destination, send it via Western Union. Do not carry your driver's license with you either. If it is stolen, you might have to, how to be forbid, go to the courthouse again to get a new one. Just carry your proof of membership in the country club. That is enough to prove you are not an illegal immigrant and thugs and criminals would not have any luck using a country club membership anyway. I'm also packing heat in the form of a Smith & Wesson. Just feeling the cold steel, snug against my hip, it makes me feel strong and safe. You should always carry a high-powered pistol or revolver in the event, huh to be forbid, that you are forced to degrade yourself so much as to use a mass transit system. And be prepared to use your weapon. Doctor's orders. Only street thugs and pregnant criminals ride mass transit, and they always carry stolen weapons they use to score drugs from your elderly parents, abort your daughter's babies, and turn your sons queer. Be prepared to feel uncomfortable as you wait anywhere from one to three days for the bus. Bring a book or a magazine to read, but make sure it's something fresh, like Coastal Living magazine, so the others know you are relaxed and calm because you own a house on Grayton Beach. I don't need a magazine today because I'm disguised as Attorney General Eric Holder. The other riders know I'm cool. When the bus arrives, do everything it takes to be the first on board. Bite, claw, scratch, pull hair, slap, whatever it takes. Now, I'm going to use a bit of street talk here, so cover your ears if you're easily offended. You have to show the other riders that you are not their bitch and that they are, in fact, your bitch. Once you are on the bus and you have established your dominance, you should know that the first four rows of the bus are no longer reserved for white passengers. Anyone can sit anywhere, including next to you. Do not look at or talk to other passengers. When you arrive at your destination, depart the bus as quickly as possible and then use a sanitizing wipe. You know what comes next, moisturize. Now, this is when we answer my original question, what do I do once I get off the bus? At this point, you'll locate your car, or, rather, your other car. 
I may have forgotten to mention this, the day before you use mass transit, you should park your second car at your bus stop. Locate your car quickly, even during the middle of the workday, the streets of downtown Birmingham are filled entirely with gay rapists and baby murderers. Do not allow yourself to be tricked into thinking that you are safe just because there are patrol cars everywhere and cap officers on bikes on every corner or because crime rates in downtown Birmingham are just the same as Vestavia and Homewood. That's how fools die. Now, you drive your second car the remaining block or three to your destination. If you work downtown on a daily basis, a good tip is to try and make it possible to drive your second car directly into your office so that you can step out of your car door and into your office chair. This will make things much safer. Now, the problem with mass transit, and the reason Birmingham is not a mass transit city, has to do with the second car. You see, not every man has the kind of time it takes to make sure his second car is at his bus stop. That is especially true considering the horrible traffic on Highway 280, every time your Christian straight wife has to drive you downtown to move your second car around, that takes hours. That's why we are going to scrap mass transit and instead add more lanes on Highway 280. And soon, just like when we added more lanes to Interstate 65, there won't be any traffic. Thanks for listening, Huckabee Bless America, in the name of Chuck Norris, good night.